Are we live? I think we're live. I'm gonna start talking like we're live. What's up, everybody? How are you? Justin here. I know we're officially live. Just touching base after a pretty cool podcast that I just did. I was interviewed on a show called The Advancing Man Project. And this is all about masculinity. It speaks to dads. It speaks to male entrepreneurs, business owners, or just, you know, men that are working nine to fives in the corporate world, single men, married men, all of it. We're basically talking about the journey of masculinity. And one of the core things that I teach in all of my coaching is how you do something is how you do everything. That's really like the 3D reality of it. How you do something is how you do everything. On a more sort of philosophical slash spiritual woo-woo level, it's actually that everything is everything. But that's a little more advanced, maybe a story for another day. So if we talk about the fact that how you do something is how you do everything, it's important to look into what I call a false belief or a self-sabotage belief that getting healthy is hard work, quote unquote hard work, right? I'm 38, I was born in 86. I was raised in a generation that was still really taught that like hard work is the way to do things. Hard work is the most valuable. Anything that you want in this life requires tremendous amount of hard work and suffering and sacrifice. Now, if we look at that from an entrepreneurial perspective or a business perspective or a career perspective, for that to be true, then you know the person working in central Texas right now now up on a roof, like hammering shingles into a roof should be like unbelievably high paid. <laughs> this person should have a massive salary and should be raking in all the money because of the hard work they're doing. But that's not the case, right? The world's first, the youngest billionaire ever became a billionaire at 24 years old. And he did the whole thing as a team of one using AI software. So what has happened is a lot of society has not caught up to the fact that we no longer live in an industrial era. We live in the information age. And we hear these terms, we hear things like information age, but a lot of people don't really know what it means or how to participate in it. And it's no different from health and wellness. Health and wellness, we're taught to believe that everything is hard work, suffering, sacrifice, right? You have to give up your favorite foods. You have to restrict calories. Or if you're carnivore, you gotta give up everything that's not meat. If you're vegan, you gotta give up all of the meat. If you're keto, you can never eat a single carbohydrate again or your head will explode and you'll die unhappy, right? Like this is, it's crazy. It's just crazy. And then we're taught that in order to be physically fit, to have muscles, right? Muscles and visible abs, we gotta go do CrossFit six days a week or absolutely kill ourselves and spend hours and hours on the treadmill and be miserable the whole time, right? And just caloric restriction, caloric restriction, caloric restriction. And then if caloric restriction doesn't work, well, then we gotta restrict ourselves fully by fasting or intermittent fasting and just being hungry. You know what? If you wanna lose weight, you're just gonna be hungry. And then what ends up happening is your health gets worse and worse and worse. And you don't understand the things you thought were gonna get you there, the things that you hated doing are actually harming and damaging your health over time, worsening your metabolic health. And then it becomes even more difficult on the back end to get back to optimal metabolic health so you can actually hit the physique and aesthetic goals that you want to hit. So I want you to understand and hear me when I say that hard work can get you in a lot of trouble. So what we first have to do is come up with our own definition of what hard work is. There are a lot of men in the world who are totally willing to do the quote unquote hard work, right? Like going and hammering shingles into a roof, getting to the gym every day, waking up early before the family is up so you can go to the gym or do the things you need to do or read or do some work before you go off to your nine to five to provide and keep your family safe and all these things or do the cold plunges or listen to David Goggins and yeah, I'm gonna go hard, rah, right? There's so much masculinity that is wrapped up in hard hard work, pain, and suffering. And this is why things like stoicism become so popular in masculinity online, right? Where I think it's, I think it's a train wreck. I think stoicism is a train wreck for overall health and wellness, even though I studied it for many years. But when we look at it through a different lens, the fitness, the cold plunging, the going for long runs, the going to a job nine to five, working 40 to 100 hours a week to provide your family, all these things that are hard work, quote unquote, hard work. They are and can be hard work. But when you're stuck at a certain level of health and wellness, or you're stuck at a certain level of personal development, or you're stuck at a certain level in your romantic relationship, or you're stuck in a certain level of spirituality, you need to do hard work, quote unquote, that is actually just different work. So for men, when they come working with me and they want to get better at romantic relationships or improve the communication in their relationship or they're single and they want to attract a partner and it hasn't been working out for them, I have to help them see that this same mindset they have around hard work and all the other areas of life does not apply to romance. There's work to be done in romance and intimacy and vulnerability and connecting with another person, but it just looks different. That work looks very different. So for instance, you may have someone who is a hard driving entrepreneur, who owns a business, who does a 
Tim Ferriss style morning routine, wakes up early, does a cold plunge every day, goes to the CrossFit gym, comes home, eats perfectly, handles his business on the computer, goes into his home office and gets everything done. Hard work, hard work, hard work, right? That's actually easy for that guy now. He's built that into his life. It's no longer hard work. It's just his normal, right? Eating healthy is my normal. Running three businesses is my normal. Having a conscious romantic relationship is my normal. Having a good community is my normal. When I'm traveling around the world and I'm traveling for two months at a time, traveling becomes my normal. Those are no longer hard work. They just are things that I do, which means when you want to get to the next level, you have to be willing to do the hard work that is different from the hard work that you've already done that has become easy work, okay? So for some of you, believe it or not, it was actually hard work to start eating really poorly and eat a bunch of toxic junk and not take care of your body and focus on other things that are not your health. It was actually hard work to get there. But on the masculinity side, you have these guys that will do the cold plunges, that will do the workouts, that will work 100 hours a week and bring home the bacon and do all these things, right? But then I go and tell them that they need to share with their partner when they're feeling insecure. They need to tell their partner when they're feeling vulnerable. They need to ask their partner for emotional and psychological support. They actually need to learn how to hold their partner's emotions. When their partner is upset and having an emotional experience, they have to do the quote unquote hard work of learning how to hold that person's emotions without trying to fix the problem, without trying to tell them why they have the problem, without trying to solve the problem for them, because most men are uncomfortable with emotions. So when their partner is having really difficult emotions, it makes the man's nervous system, and this is true in heterosexual couples. It's true in homosexual couples. Masculine and feminine polarities play out universally no matter what. It's not about gender. But if your partner's having an emotional experience, and let's just say I'm talking about a heterosexual male, when their partner's having a hard experience, their nervous system starts to freak out. They learned when they were very young that emotions were not okay. Most men don't cry, right? Especially a lot of the hard driving, super driven alpha entrepreneur types. They're uncomfortable with emotions. So when their partner gets upset, instead of thinking about their partner's emotional experience and with that emotional experience, what they're telling the person is, I need you to stop being upset because I'm not comfortable with your upset and your upset is making me have feelings that I don't know how to handle, so I can't actually show up for your emotions. So the hard work for this person is not another cold plunge and another CrossFit workout or starting another business. The hard work is learning how to show up for themselves emotionally and getting comfortable with their own emotional self-expression in a safe way so that they can show up as a safe space for somebody else's emotional experience. That's how they become a better partner. Emotional needs, meaning psychological needs. The same is true of weight loss and metabolic health. You have to take a look at what you're doing right now that you believe is hard work? Because I've never had somebody come to me who's been overweight for 30 years, who hasn't tried a low calorie diet, who hasn't forced themselves to go to the gym and do a bunch of cardio, who hasn't tried keto, who hasn't tried going vegan, who hasn't tried Weight Watchers, Long Beach diet, Atkins diet, carnivore, whatever, all the diets, the Barry's boot camps, the Pilates classes, everything. They've done all the hard things to try to get the results and it bit them in the ass. It actually made their metabolic health worse. Then I come along and I say, you have been chronically under eating, chronically starving yourself. You're suffering from multiple micronutrient deficiencies. Your hormones are out of balance. And the only way for you to solve this is to remove all the ultra processed poison junk food from your life and eat more real food, probably more food than you've ever eaten, probably more calories than you've ever eaten. Yes, you need to eat more food. And to them, I mean, you might as well think that I asked them to become a brain surgeon overnight. Like it's so hard for them, they can't even wrap their heads around it. And they have so much fear and discomfort around, yes, but what if I eat more? And what if I gain three pounds? What if I gain five pounds? What if I gain 10 pounds? Not realizing that they have dug themselves in a metabolic hole where the only way out is to do the quote unquote hard work of nourishing their bodies, giving their body more vitamins and minerals, eating more nutrient dense food, doing less workouts for a period of time, going outside for walks in the sun, putting your bare feet in the grass, sleeping eight hours a night, eating real food as it exists in nature, removing toxic ultra processed junk foods. Ladies and gentlemen, does this sound hard to you? Does this sound like hard work? And if it sounds like hard work, then we have some serious work to do. And is it hard work? It's not hard work, it's different work. It's a different approach than what you're used to. If you're used to suffering and starving and sacrifice and doing hard workouts and all the things that feel terrible, you've convinced yourself that getting healthy is hard work. So as long as you have a belief inside of your person that is getting healthy equals hard work, when I come along and say, you know what? Let's not worry about calories. Let's eat as much as you want. I don't want you to feel hungry. Let's eat as much as you want. I don't want you to ever feel hungry. Here's a list of foods. You have to eat off this list of foods. There's 110 foods to choose from, a ton of variety. And I want you to eat as much as you want. I never want you to feel hungry. And then, you know what? After every meal, just step outside, just walk. 
for five minutes and then turn around and come back. Take a 10 minute walk after each meal. Don't take a headphones or an iPad or, you know, audible book or podcast or anything. Just go walk, turn around and come back 10 minutes after every meal. Get to sleep a little bit earlier. Learn how to wake up without an alarm clock. Let yourself sleep eight hours. Get some sunshine on your skin. Go outside, feel the sunshine. Feel the sunshine in the morning. Feel the sunshine in the evening. When the sun's going down, just park yourself outside somewhere, bare feet in the grass and watch the sunset. Do you need to go to the gym? Nope, you don't need to go to the gym. Don't need to. Just do this. Do this thing that I'm telling you to do for 60 days. So again, I want you guys to think over the last two minutes of what I've just said. Does that sound like hard work? The only reason why you think it's hard work is because it's different than what you're doing right now and you have already adopted the false bullshit belief that getting healthy is hard work. It's not hard work. It's just different. And what I'm doing is actually asking you to put your health and wellness first as a priority, right? Your family might not want to eat the way you do. You may have to make yourself a separate dinner than your family. You need to put yourself first. It's not hard work to put yourself first. The only reason it's hard work to put yourself first is because you become a people pleaser. You put everybody else before yourself. Your health is last. It's on the back burner, right? So men, if you are rough and tough and Mr. Alpha male and can run at 100 miles an hour and run all the businesses and do the cold plunges and do the CrossFit and lift a thousand pounds, right? The quote unquote hard work for you is to figure out the emotional side of things. Show up for people emotionally. Step out of your prince energy, which is look at me. I can do, 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 do. Look at how great I am. And step into your king energy, which is empathizing, feeling for people, helping people feel safe, loved, supported, protected. That's your king energy. And for the rest of you dealing with metabolic health issues, right? Show up for yourself. Show up for the little inner child inside of you that is stuck in a body that's failing it, that is obese and dealing with chronic health conditions and has been dealing with this stuff for decades and just refuses to fix it. Reprogram your false beliefs around what hard work is. You define hard work. You decide if you're going to label something as hard work and then insist kicking and screaming the whole way that it is actually hard work. Giving up poison is not hard work because you feel like a million bucks from day one doing it. Getting sunshine on your skin is not hard work because it feels great. Going for walks is not hard work because it feels great. Getting to bed and sleeping longer, more peaceful hours is not hard work because it feels great. So you got to ditch these false self-limiting beliefs that getting healthy is hard, that being a dad is hard, that being an entrepreneur is hard, that being a corporate worker is hard, that showing up as a partner is hard. you got to ditch these false beliefs. They are toxic. They're creating your reality. Your beliefs are creating your reality, okay? You have to understand that. The faster you can understand that, the better. So redefine hard work for yourself and think about what it is that you need to do. All right, I'm gonna wrap this one there, but it was an amazing conversation. I'll let you guys know when it comes out. It's on the Advancing Advancing Man Project and uh, just an amazing conversation that, that spawned a lot of thoughts for me around metabolic health and masculinity and, and all the things. If you insist that making money requires a ton of hard work and hours, long hours and suffering and sacrifice, then guess what? Money's always gonna be hard for you. Always gonna be hard because you insist it is hard. You you tell the universe, hey, universe, making money is so hard. It requires so much hard work. It's so difficult. And the universe just looks back at you and goes, if you insist, my dear, here you go. Here's more hard work for you to match the belief that you've already decided is the truth, you little reality creation machine. If you guys have any questions about this, DM me. Let me know. There's a comment here. You can send me a message, instagram.com slash the Clovis culture. You guys are amazing. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. Really sit down and think about your relationship to hard work, what that means for you.